isn't just now, bit by bit starts selling off pretty much all of their assets within the United States. We have to remember that China at the beginning of its boom and when Reagan went to China, made the peace, if you like, China bought massive amounts of debt from the US. They've really de-risked from that. And I think the reason why it's worth watching is China has invested huge amounts in what it calls its Belt and Road Initiative. And in order to explain what that is to people at home, that's all these massive infrastructure projects that China do all over the world, which they found, actually, funnily enough, if you benefit people by building infrastructure, schools and hospitals, you actually make more money rather, rather than throwing money into the US economy, which is no friend to China. China kind of moving away from the dollar, is that the idea, or they don't, or they don't believe that the US will pay their debts? Well, which, which one is it? I think, Murad, you're right with the, 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 the second point more than anything. The Chinese manage their financial planning and their economy very, very strictly. They don't do it from Beijing. They do it from Shanghai, which is their financial hub, where they have very, very many clever analysts looking at global economies and how they should invest the money. And you know, we cover this on the channel all the time, Murad. We're seeing very much so the U.S. economy is not somewhere that many investors want to put their money around it now. So it's no surprise that China is looking to pull as much out as possible. I've been watching a lot of analysts actually out there, and they, they keep saying that the U.S. is just printing money without any sort of substance behind it. Is uh, and, and I guess there are a lot of the, as, as one would say, doom mongers out there. But what does this mean, sort of, for the global economy? Are we looking at? I mean, because we've always sort of relied on the dollar. Could the dollar eventually just be worth, worthless? Yeah, I think Murad, we're already seeing that reset in, in global markets. We're seeing that even today, uh, with this last couple of weeks, even the Russian ruble. The Russian ruble that the United States said would be a currency that would be worth nothing. They would crush, they would destroy it due to the power and their hegemony across the world. What we saw today, the Russian ruble recovering nicely uh, against the dollar, actually improving in a way that no analyst had predicted it would do. You've seen that happen. We've also seen, you know, the, we've covered BRICS a lot on the channel, Murad. We've covered the BRICS currency being invented of all of the all of the BRICS countries getting together and creating their own currency and I think if that happens that's the death of the dollar for me and that's the that's how it works that's how it's going to work hey I want to say show on my team show um uh, first thing and foremost I'm going to give all praises and glory and honor that's due to you how will buy shim how will shy by shim um I want to give double honors to the apostles and elders a great millstone and we will blessings and salutations to the hopeful elect. No, it's in the gospel, but I'm looking up the standard of Yahweh Bashim, Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. Uh, this is just a quick lesson through the Spirit, Lord, so to be edified. Um, going into this this banking crisis and the collapse of the U.S. dollar, um, this is an ongoing thing. Um, brothers have been doing countless videos um, about the U.S. dollar collapse because these times are imminent. Okay, you got quantitative easing, which I believe the U.S. is on QE4, if I'm not mistaken, which allows them to borrow money at a zero to nothing interest rate. Okay, but regardless of that, they're not paying the money back or the bills because the money is not being backed by anything of residual value. Okay, like while the elites, they actually have substance, they have gold, they have silver, okay, they have land, they have livestock, they have assets, okay, which is worth uh, which you would consider old money. But this paper money, when he decided to take the U.S. dollar off the gold standard, basically, um, they've given you a, a fiat currency. Okay, well, like when you go into the word dollar, dollar goes into a measurement of a particular amount. So if you had 100 uh, um, Federal Reserve certificates, then I believe you can get up to like a... I think it's converted over to like um, basically how many notes you have on hand, then you can converge that over into this amount of silver you have stored in reserve. Okay, like if I believe I had like a like a dollar, which is a measurement, then I would be able to get so many ounces of silver based on how much, how many dollars I have, uh, or how many uh, uh, federal bank notes. Okay, that I have in my uh, possession. Okay, because I mean, let's just say if I had a hundred, not Federal Reserve, let's just say if I had a hundred uh, dollar, uh, fe if I, let's say if I had a hundred uh, certificates, okay, because it was called a, a certificate at the time, okay, not a note, note is valueless, but if I had a certificate, let's just say if I had a hundred certificates of a dollar, I could go to the bank and say, hey, I want to exchange this for my silver, okay, and then they would give me that. 
based on how much or how many certificates I've given them, then they will converge it over to the silk I have in reserve. Because let's face it, nobody's gonna be walking around with uh, three, four ounces or two pounds of silver. I mean, literally, like that's that that will weigh you down, okay? And on top of that, you know, people will seek to rob you because it's obvious that you're walking around with ten ounces of silver in your back pocket. Okay, it's not very smart. So what they did in order to uh, to make things matters or matters of, of of a particular one, what they did was to to, to give you the note or the certificate in order to represent how much silver you had in the bank. Okay, versus in the ancient world, we had pouches and purses that we carried our silver in. But even then you had thieves and robbers. But now you have uh, what they call a Federal Reserve note. Okay, and matter of fact, uh, uh, Federal note versus dollar or treasury note. Okay, it says the Federal Reserve note is described the paper demand liabilities of the Federal Reserve commonly referred as dollar bills, which circulate in the U.S. as legal tender. Okay, so this is their version of money. It says for practical purposes, the Federal Reserve note is the monetary unit of the U.S. economy. Okay. Uh, so basically, it's legal tender, but it's not legal money. Okay, now let's look up... Uh, Federal Reserve Certificate. Let's see what it is. Let's see something. I may be uh, misquoting it. It's been a minute since I went into this. But see, even here, it says payable to the barrels on demand, one silver dollar. Okay. One dollar versus a bank note or a legal tender, which is the dollar. Okay, and you present this upon the treasurer or whoever has the money, and then you exchange it for your silver. Okay, versus a uh, hold up. All right, versus note, it's a silver certificate. Okay, it says the notes can no longer be redeemed for their equivalent face value in silver coinage. However, silver certificates are still legal tender. They can be redeemed for their face value in Federal Reserve notes. So this, this bank note that you have, that's a note, it has no value to it. And this is the reason why, I mean, yeah, you can buy uh, uh, silver with U.S. dollars. I mean, you can buy them, okay, but the amount of value that you get for the dollar is rather low, man. You know, like I believe they say like every BRICS currency is like, I believe it's, it take like 52 US dollars or something to like every BRICS currency would show you that this money is totally being devalued, if that make any sense. All right. Uh, it says here, the United States also, United States notes also known as legal tender notes were first issued by the act of March 10th, 1862. It says these were notes issued by the government on its own behalf and they had no backing power whatsoever. It says they were legal timber simply because the government said they were. And at the time legal tender did mean that they had to be accepted. The meaning of the term changed in the early mid 20th century. It says the last issue of the United States notes were issued in 1966 and 66. A series of $100 notes. Uh, yeah. Uh, he goes into it. I mean, he kind of breaks it down. He goes into the dates and all that other stuff. But the fact of the matter is that now the money that you have in your pocket, the Federal Reserve note, that dollar, which is legal tender, is not worth shit. Okay? It's not really worth anything, man. Especially when you look at the U.S. debt clock. We had $33 trillion deficit, and they're talking about government shutdowns, man. Okay? Like this, is a, this is a Federal Reserve note. Okay? Federal Reserve note. But back in the day, it was not so. Okay, like a hundred dollar bill here. It says Federal Reserve note. And people don't know the difference between real money and fiat currency, man. Okay, like let's look up the definition of what it is. Fiat currency. Fiat money. It says fiat money is a type of currency that is not backed by a commodity such as gold or silver. 
Okay, basically a fraudulent note. It's fraudulent. It's no. It's not real money. It's monopoly money. It says it is typically designated by the issuing government to be legal tender, and it's authorized by government regulations. Okay, and that's the point. Now, the reason why you can buy up with it is because they made it legal tender, but technically it's not real money. Now, if the government say that, you know what, the Federal Reserve note is not legal tender anymore, then you can have $100,000 under the Madden. It wouldn't be worth a goddamn thing, man. Okay? And this is the reason why the United States is in debt. U.S. debt clock. Let's look what, see what it says. The National debt clock. Come on, this damn thing is kind of slow. Yep. U.S. dollar purchasing power. 1933 FDR gold seizure with 77 cents. Gold standard abandonment, which is 25. I don't, I don't really understand that. I'm not sure what they're trying to compare it to, so I'm not going to attempt to break that down, but... Uh, this is a uh, Woodrow Wilson. It says, I'm the most unhappy man. And they're making mockery of this system because this is literally uh, on the usdebtclock.org. And when you go to org websites, they usually have pretty valid information, even though a lot of it is, 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 is forged by these governments to make it reputable. But it's still, you know, what it is. It says, I'm the most unhappy man. It says, I have unwittingly ruined my country. A great industrial nation is controlled by it. Uh, uh, controlled by its system of credit. With our system of credit, it's concentrated the growth of the nation, therefore, and all our activities are in the hands of a few men. When he said, give me uh, control of the nation's money, I care not who run his laws. I think that was Amshul Bauer, if I'm not mistaken. It's lucky if I'm off on that. But it says, we have come to one of the, the worst rule, one of the most completely controlled and dominated governments in the civilized world. It says no longer a government by free opinion, no longer a government by conviction and the vote of the majority, but a government by the opinion and doers of a small group of dominant men, which is the Illuminati, the elites. Okay. Now the national debt, thirty-three trillion seven hundred and eleven billion five hundred and twenty-seven million, and it's counting. Okay, so this dollar is getting ready to collapse, as we're seeing here in the article. Hyperinflation will hit Babylon more sooner than later. It's inevitable, meaning that the cost of bread is going to literally go from $2 and a couple of cents to literally 50, 60 bucks. Steak dinner, Pastor Tar always make the example, you can buy a $20 steak dinner. By the time you get the bill, that steak dinner can go up to $500, which is hyperinflation. Okay, and this is going to happen. So this is the book of Revelation 6, and I'm going to start at verses 5. It says, and when he had opened the third seal... I heard the third beast say, come and see. And I beheld a lower black horse. Okay, and when you think of black, you think of death, you think of uh, anything that's outside of the light. It says that he had set on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And when you think of balances, they represent uh, yokes of iron. Okay, and it says, and I heard the voice in the midst of the four beasts say, a measure of wheat for a penny and three measures of barely for a penny. Because when you go back into the Roman Empire at that time, the currency of that time was called the Roman Daenerys. Okay, um, let's go here. Denarian, which is containing 10. Roman silver coin in New Testament time. It took its name from being equal to 10 asses. Okay, it says it was the principal silver coin of the Roman Empire. From the parable of the laborers and the vineyard, it would seem that the Denarius was then the ordinary pay for a day's wages, man. Okay, Denarian, as they will say. Strong's G, 1220. Denarion. Denarion. And I did a listen on uh, silver, actual silver dollars. Uh, I did it probably like two, three years ago. I don't know if it's still on this channel or the ones they took. They take so many pages, it's kind of hard to keep up. But I may go back into a lesson on it because, you know, Jake actually got a couple of, you know, Jake sometimes have them coins on hand, you know, which is not a bad idea for brothers to invest in silver in this time because things are getting ready to go through the roof. And ultimately, we're going to go back to a bartering system, but it's through the spirit and power of Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh shine his mercies. Okay, you can have tons of gold, tons of silver, tons of ammunition, and tons of uh, resources. The Lord is not dealing with you, then you're through. All right? But it says, um, a wheat measure of barely for a penny, and see that thou hurt not the oil and the wine, which the oil and the wine is the truth. All right? 
um, the money will fail, and it is failing. All right, this thing is collapsing. So, hey, brothers, <laughs> kiss your financial troubles away because uh, kiss them, kiss them goodbye eventually. Because with a simple fact, this whole we all getting ready to 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 be in financial woes, but we don't give a shit because hey, we're not. We're gonna be out and out of this society anyway, so we're prepared for it. You know, we just ask them what's taking so long. But anyway, this is the book of uh, Zephaniah 1 and 10. It says, And it should come to pass in that day, says Yahweh, that there should be a noise, the noise of the cry from the fish gate, and the howling from the second, and the great crashing from the hills. Okay, the fish gate goes into your marketplaces, okay, like modern day Wall Street. You had uh, Mactesh, which goes into the Hebrew word Makwatash, I believe, which means mortar. Okay, when you think of mortar and brick, you think of something that's, uh, it's fragile until it hardens up, man. You know, like they say, concrete, it bottoms out or it strengthens over a peak of 30 years. Okay, but when you look at untempted mortar, that's a fragile system. Okay, and this system is very fragile because it's credit-based. And it says here, How ye inhabitants of Mactesh, for all the merchant people are cut down and all that have bare silver are cut off, okay? So all you, 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 you silver merchants, you Bitcoin investors, man, you know, you're investing in this particular stock, that stock. NASDAQ is down. Uh, uh, the Dow is down. Everything is down because we know that stocks are ultimately manipulated. OK, they control all that. So you big time investors that don't understand the trends of the markets and the ups and downs of the market, then use a fool because basically, you know, you put all your life savings into the stock market and you can lose it within mere seconds if you don't know the trends which is all controlled anyway. And the only people that capitalize off the stock markets are, and definitely the people that creates it in the elites and their families. Like finding out the people that hit the lottery, find out that they were all juiced in to some degree. Now I will say that there will be chance that people hit the lottery, but unlikely, I've never known nobody in my family to hit it. And I see Jake's play that shit every day. So I'm not buying it. But um, it says, how ye inhabitants of Mektesh for all the merchant people are cut down and all that bear silver are cut off, okay? So, hey, this economy is getting ready to collapse. And as I was reading the comment board, several news sources, or I won't say several, but I have seen this. It says, according to insiders, the U.S. economy, economy will collapse within the first quarter of 2024. So within the first three months, we could be in Jacob's trouble, which I believe that quarter starts, uh, I believe the first quarter already started, end of the fiscal year, maybe. Let me, let me look that up real quick. Uh, what, maybe October, what starts the fiscal year? Fiscal year, maybe in October, oh, January 1st, slock year, slock year. But I thought that quarters kind of overlap. Okay, but it says the fiscal year is one year period that companies and governments use for financial reporting and budgeting. So by the first of the year, this is when they have their budgets laid out. They're going to spend this on the military, going to spend this on infrastructure, going to send this to war, we're going to send that to Israel. OK, and we're going to use this from the people and this is how much we're going to tax the people to generate a profit on our revenue. OK, and put people in debt because ultimately it profits to keep people in debt. Like one thing about the rich, if brothers know that the rich use, they borrow money from the poor to keep them in debt, never spending their own money. So this is why the rich stay rich and the poor stay poor. OK, so it is a very fraudulent based system. I can tell you in James, the fifth chapter um, are you rich men, okay, weeping how for the miseries that's come upon you. You have heaped treasures for yourselves from the last days, man. Okay, so y'all about Shimi Hawa is getting ready to take us up out of this, 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 this rat race, man. Okay, because I was just at work today. Like these people are too emotionally invested in this. They want praises at work. You know, they have what they call kudos at our meetings and everybody's getting these shout outs. And I'm in the background, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Next, <laughs> you know. But these people need this. And when this place falls, these people are going to lose it, man. Okay. So this is the book of Genesis 47. And I'm going to start at verses 13. It says, and there was no bread in all the land, which economic collapse constitutes famine. It says, for the famine was very sore, so that the land of Egypt and all the land of Canaan fainted by reason of famine, meaning they had an economic collapse. Okay. Remember the Lord gave Pharaoh the dream. Okay. Seven years of plenty, seven years of, 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 uh, of, of a famine, which the famine out mitigated the seven years of plenty. It says that when money fell in the land of Egypt and in the land of Canaan, all the Egyptians came into Joseph and said, give us bread for why should we die in thy presence for the money fell. Okay. And these people were bugging out because they wasn't used to living off uh, means as such. 
Okay, these people were living way beyond their means, okay? Because at the time, the province of Goshen, you know, and parts of Egypt was flourishing, man, because flax seed, you know, flax, cotton, wool, you know, corn, and ultimately they had us as slaves. So Egypt was a thriving economy just like America. And it says, and Joseph said, give your cattle and I will give for your cattle if money failed. And they bought that cattle and went to Joseph and Joseph gave their bread in exchange for horses and for the flocks and for the cattle of the herds and all the asses. And he fed them with bread for all their cattle for that year. Okay, so basically what happened was they went back into a bartering system, okay, because when money is not no good, then you start to barter on things that have similar or greater value. Like, okay, three loaves of bread for my wife. All right, here you go. Give me the three loaves of bread. You can have this mom. And it's going to go back to that, man. Okay, people are going to be selling their sons and daughters into slavery for a carton of eggs, man. Hey, it's going to get real grimy and cutthroat out here, man. Okay, and this thing going to happen quick, bro. One day you're going to wake up and you're going to be, oh, man, economic collapse globally. Banks are closed. Restaurants are closed. Riots, insurrection. We got to deploy the troops. Which is gonna be the UN troops, man. And when I say that they're gonna uh, establish the peace, that's what they mean. The peacekeepers meaning they putting you down because it found out that they have legislation out there before the prime ministers of Israel, whatever they want to call themselves, to basically kill citizens that's riotous. Okay, meaning that the, the police and the, pol the riot police, they can literally pull guns and put people to death if they feel that their safety is threatened because their justification is that. These riots are getting too out of hand. They're too volatile. Okay. But I'm going to edit there, man. I didn't want to harp on this all day. I just thought this would be edifying through the spirit. Giving all praises and glory and honor. That's due to you. How about you? How about you? And with that, shalom.